Good morning, everyone. Good. Take your seats. We'll try to get started. I was just listening. It was kind of like a buzz in here, and now it all of a sudden is quiet. <laughs> Must have some of Molly's principalship control or something. <laughs> or she's trained us well. Anyway, good morning, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order. We have no one excused, and the minutes are circulated from April 25th. Look, yes, Tracy. Tracy moves as circulated. Are there any comments? All in favor? That is passed. Are there any post-agenda items? Seeing none, could we have a motion to adopt the agenda? Lionel moves. All in favor? That is also passed. Or we have a development report. Uh, I think there's four items on there. Are there any questions? Yes, Anne-Marie. The first one is an approval of an existing single-family dwelling. And I'm just, you know, I was thinking, is that an, an old one? And now they just discovered they had no permit, so they still had to do it? Or what's going on in that one? for soil that has not yet came to you because we're still waiting for more information and that was when it was discovered that his house which is very very old so it would have been before the land use bylaw did not have a permit so he brought that into compliance prior to the soil recycling facility okay, thank you Shanalee anything else and we'll accept that for information moving on to subdivisions and we have a fresh yes Alan I'd like to excuse myself for a perceived pecuniary interest for the next two. Okay. Thank you. And we, we were told to give Aaron a really tough time. <laughs> anyway, no welcome and we look forward to your presentations. So we'll go to the first one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first subdivision we have today is file 2019-0-010. The purpose of this application is to create one new parcel for residential use, approximately 30.5 acres in size, containing an existing residence, shop, and barns from a previously unsubdivided quarter section. The subject lands are legally known as the Southwest Quarter Section of 1816-15, west of the 4th Meridian. It's located in Division 4, southeast of the hamlet of Rainier and west of Highway 36. The proposed parcel was rezoned from the agricultural district to the small holding district through bylaw 1928-18. A surveyor sketch has been submitted with the application and it appears that all dwellings and buildings are contained within the proposed lot. Water for the proposed parcel is from the county's rural water line and sewage is currently dealt with a septic tank and field. Access to the proposed parcel is from the west um, from, to, from a developed county road. The residual parcel is accessed from a developed approach along Township Road 162. Information submitted from the AER indicates that there are no abandoned wells on the property. No wetlands and no historic resources are located within the proposed parcel. Uh, the application has been circulated and we've received the following comments back from referral agencies. Municipal services has no issues or concerns. TELUS has no objection. Fortis Alberta does not require an easement and the EID has no objections. Based on this, it is recommended that the subdivision be approved subject to the condition that all outstanding property taxes be paid to the County of Newham. And now if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Brian. Um, mostly in regards to the size of the parcel, uh, just, I'm having trouble understanding why 
they would take the full corner out when really just the imprint or the profile of that yard is just a, a, a fraction of that. So I'm just curious why that is, the 30 acres versus the, you know, I, I don't know what the yard site would be, but maybe four or five acres, maybe a little more, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak to the applicant, but I don't know if Diane could answer why they chose that. Um, if you can remember, we did do a rezoning on this particular property um, to move it from small hold or from agriculture to small holdings. This particular section has a section pivot on it, so the um, corners are a lot larger than our regular seven acre vacant, so that's why it's before you as that large parcel. Satisfied, Brian? It is what it is. Well, I, I still don't, it doesn't answer the question. I mean, I understand what you're saying, that that's a dry corner and that their, their, their preference is to take the whole corner out. It doesn't really answer the fact that um, that yard site is, uh, it doesn't involve the whole corner. And, and that's where I'm having trouble with this. I mean, a 30 acre, any subdivision in, in a rural area, as you know, I usually vote in favor of that. and. Uh, but I'm, I'm having trouble with this one because it's uh, there's a, uh, quite a bit of that corner that is still uh, dry land but, uh, but farmable and, and not really imp Im impacting upon the actual yard site. So. And I totally agree with that and I think that's a, an excellent point because under our current agricultural policies we wouldn't allow this type of subdivision. We say you are limited to the extent of a seven acre vacant corner or to the extent of the improvements of the yard site. When someone comes in and wants a larger parcel like this, they are required to go through the rezoning process. Our small holdings land use district allows for parcels from seven acres to 40 acres that are beyond the extent of the yard site that would take in these pasture lands or, or cultivated lands. So at the time when that was brought before council, they determined that in this location, this size of parcel was appropriate. Council made the decision through a bylaw amendment to approve it. As MPC, you look and say, okay, well, we've got the zoning in place, council's approved it. Is what's being proposed in line with what council has approved previously? And I would suggest because they've got the small holdings land use zoning in place, they've gone through that process, they've gone through the public process to allow this size of parcel. Your, your determination at this time is to determine whether or not what's being presented meets the land use bylaw. And under the small holdings district, this does qualify. Lionel. I have a little problem with this also, using the fact that it's a pivot that is de determining the, the boundary of this. Um, pivots change, and we witnessed that at home just this past year, that it changed the whole configuration of, of uh, what a, a, a subdivision should have been. And so I do have a little problem with this too. I'm getting my exercise today. Um, my response to that would be as MPC, if you're not happy with what's being proposed, to send it back to council for a discussion about subdivision policies and whether or not this is the result of a small holdings. So again, at the council, when it comes before council, council has the opportunity to determine if it's appropriate or not. So when council makes that decision, then it's again, it's the two hats. You're sitting as MPC today, you're following council policy. If you're not happy or you're not in agreement with council policy, that to me then is a request back up to council to review those policies and whether or not you still are in. When you see some of these, because it was funny, because we had small holdings for those that have been around for a while. We had small holdings. We got rid of small holdings because we weren't using it. We then had a bunch of people coming in asking for these larger parcels. We then in the last bylaw um, iteration put it back in. And so now we're seeing more of these 30 acre parcels. But again, it's council's prerogative at the time an application comes forward for rezoning as to whether or not 
it's appropriate in that location. So since it's gone through the approval process, council has made that determination. At this point from MPC, I would have a hard time assisting MPC in a refusal of this application because it meets all the policies of the small holdings district in which it's been rezoned to. Anything further? Yes, Anne-Marie. How long ago did we change this to small holdings? Because you know, it's funny that you two bring that up and, and I thought I must have missed that meeting. I can't remember changing this at all. Wasn't that long? It was 18, wasn't it? Yeah, it was bylaw 20, in 1928 18, so we're on 1952, so a couple of months ago, probably. I'd have to look back. Memories are short. <laughs> you know, we can, it depends on how far you go back. You know, at one point in time, you wouldn't have dreamt that there would have been a section pivot there. At one point in time, you wouldn't have dreamt there was a, ever going to be anything on there. So we make rules and regulations to fit the circumstances, and we've got small holdings, and uh, so be it. People have gone to a lot of work to have a 30-acre parcel, and it's allowed in small holdings, so there we are. It's come forward. Wayne. I don't remember it either, but we did approve it. <laughs> we did approve it as small, uh, rezone it. So, and they've done all the work, so I make the motion to approve this. Thank you, Wayne. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It is passed. We will move on to the second one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next subdivision we have is file number 2019-0-011. The purpose of this application is to create one new parcel for residential use, approximately 31.1 acres in size, containing an existing residence from a previously unsubdivided quarter section. The lands to be subdivided are legally known as the Northwest Quarter Section of 1816-15, west of the 4th Meridian, and is located in Division 4, southeast of the hamlet of Rainier and west of Highway 36. The proposed parcel was also rezoned from the agricultural district to the small holding district through bylaw 1928-18. A surveyor sketch was submitted with the application and it appears that the dwelling is contained within the proposed lot. The survey sketch also indicates that the septic field appears to be outside of the proposed boundary line and may not meet the five foot setback from the property line. Water for the proposed parcel is from the county's rural water line and sewage is currently dealt with the septic tank and field. Access to the proposed parcel is from a developed county road to the west and the residual parcel is accessed from a developed approach to the south. There are no abandoned wells within the quarter section, no wetlands and no historic resources within the proposed parcel. The application has been circulated and we've received the following comments back. Municipal services has no issues or concerns. TELUS has no objection. Fortis Alberta does not require an easement and the EID has no objections. Based on this, it is recommended that the subdivision be approved subject to the condition that all property taxes be paid. And upon further review of the application and the location of the septic field, we would recommend adding a second condition requiring the applicant prior to finalization to conclusively determine the boundary of the septic field and adjust the property line if necessary to meet the five foot setback requirement so you may approve based on one or two of these conditions. Thank you, Erin. Questions? Anne-Marie. The, the septic field, if they have to adjust the boundaries to include the septic field and the property line distance, how much bigger is that gonna make the property and will you go into the pivot area? Where, where is the, the septic field and what's the consequence of this? Uh, we would first have to determine exactly where the septic field ends. It does need a five foot setback 
but until we know for sure where it is, we'll, we can't say exactly. Yes, Emery. So not knowing exactly where it is, then it doesn't really make sense to approve it with that condition because it might cut into the, the pivot. In this particular case, I guess as a follow-up, is again, what they've shown is a fairly wide, um, and maybe um, Shanley, if you can pop it over to the um, surveyor sketch, I think it's the next um, slide down. Right in that corner, when they, again, because septic fields are buried, it's the best guess scenario of where it is. Um, what we're asking the applicant to do is to perhaps meet on site and really determine where that is and have a, a hard and fast, because what they've kind of done is a, as you've seen, it's the circle and it's kind of here. This circle is, is showing it's crossing the property line. If they actually go in and take another look, they may end up adjusting where that septic actually is. If it is an issue, because right now it looks like it's right on the property line, the most it would do would be five feet over into the, to the field. Because right now, if you determine, according to their drawing, the edge of the septic is right on the property line. So. Is that truly the case or not? And again, it's still the best case scenario. It's not like it's going right through it, but it may be worthwhile just to determine that the entire septic is kept with the new parcel. And I would, again, reiterate that we're probably only looking to say if it's based on it, that this is correct, we'd be going five feet uh, further to the east just to ensure that we have that setback. So the overall parcel size will be quite minimal as we increase it. If if that is so the wish. The other option is to say you know, it's close enough, we're okay with it. Um, if there is an issue, you're going to have to remove the septic field and move it somewhere else within your 30 acre parcel, so you do have a lot of extra space to move it if that's what has to happen. But again, it's, it's one of those ones where um, this is a, a surveyor that uh, doesn't normally do municipal work and uh, they weren't 100% sure after many phone calls and many months of what they actually needed to capture. So um, in this case, it may just, if it's the county's MPC wish to have that detailed information, then that condition would require them to be a little bit more um, accurate with locating the septic field. Trace. So you're saying though that we could set as a condition to actually move the septic field? Two options. Yes, you could say, well, we're not moving the property line, and if it's determined that you don't meet the septic or the setback, that you would be required to put in a new field. Or you can say, to ensure that you've got your five-foot setback, move the property line five feet, which would be the more economical way um, to do that. And if we move the five feet, it still is not going to hit the pivot track? And, and where exactly is the pivot track? We don't have that information. So again, if that is of a concern, um, that would be things that we would be looking at when we're talking about doing, you know, determining what that final parcel size is going to be. Again, just to remind MPC, what we do do here is a tentative approval based on those conditions. So there could be a lot of different outcomes. They may determine they don't want to make the parcel bigger. They're going to move the septic field. We get the same result as long as they're five feet back. If they determine that um, they can move at five feet, then, and it doesn't interfere with the pivot track, then we would move at five feet. So again, the final parcel size usually says approximately whatever, because we do have these um, minor variances that will allow as we move through the conditions. Um, again, as MPC and me may or may not be aware, um, I don't bring a lot of them back, but if there's more than a 10% um, parcel size change, and in this case, because we've got such a large parcel, I wouldn't allow more than a half acre change to anything before it would come back for review for you. Um, if it's a small lot, you know, and it's a one foot move this way or that way, I normally will just do that because I know the intent of what's going on. So um, again, in this particular case, I would suggest what's probably happened after looking at these things for 20 some years, that this surveyor just made a big old circle and I don't think it was very accurate. I don't think there's probably going to be a change to the parcel size. I just think that it may force them to be a little bit more careful about what they're encompassing to show the septic field. Um, 
as I said, this is about the third or fourth diagram from this particular surveyor, um, and they struggled with what they were needing to show on the, the diagram, so. Kelly? Yeah, I struggle with approving um, because it's all well and good while the same property owners own both properties, but as soon as one sells, then we have the fight going on that the pivot's over in my yard and um, it's a little close for my comfort. Uh, One other suggestion is we could postpone until next meeting and have them come back with a better diagram that deals directly with that. So we can ask them for additional information. Um, that's always the prerogative of MPC. Um, you can say we don't have enough information here to make a decision. Um, and we're requesting that additional information around the, the septic field. But with conditions that we put forward, it's, your, it's not approved unless those conditions are met, so. Correct, so you can do two things. You can postpone, get the information, so you're making the decision based on that information, or you can say we're placing a condition that's going to ensure that the five-foot setback is met and how that's being met, whether or not um, there's better information provided that shows the five-foot setback with the current um, property line or if it needs to be moved five feet over. So again, that's a discussion we can have with the applicant. Um, if a uh, tentative approval is issued today, if there's no comfort and you want that information before rendering a decision, we can get that information for you as well. So it's two options. Molly. Molly makes the motion to approve with conditions, so we're we just basically rely on Diane's judgment, which we do quite often. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It is defeated. Now remember, we have to make a motion to defeat, if that's the case. And I'm going to recommend that if you are defeating because there's a lack of information, that you get that information. Because that kills this application, they will have to come back and pay another 1,025 to bring it back in. So again, if that's the case, I'd suggest that we postpone and uh, get that information. If I may make a motion to postpone and get more information, including pivot track, please, and how close that is. So then we have to rephrase the question. Is that correct? You've made well, a right. motion to approve. That was defeated. Right. Again, you would either make another motion to approve or you'd make a motion to postpone or you'd make a motion to refuse. So I think the motion that is on the table is that directs staff to get more information regarding septic field and pivot track. Bring that back to the next yeah. meeting. Okay. 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 I just, all right. Is every, all understood? All in favor of the second motion? And that is passed. Thank you, Diane. Okay, Aaron. Go on to the third. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next application file is 2019-0-029. The purpose of this application is to create one new parcel, approximately 30.5 acres in size, containing an existing residence and accessory structures from a previously unsubdivided quarter section. The subject lands to be subdivided are legally known as the Northeast Quarter of 24-2014, west of the 4th Meridian, and is located in Division 8, southeast of the village of Duchess. The proposed parcel was rezoned from the Agricultural District to the Small Holding District through Bylaw 1942-19. 
A surveyor sketch has been submitted with the application and it appears that the dwelling barn quonset and additional buildings are all contained within the proposed lot. Water for the proposed parcel is from the county's rural water line and sewage is dealt with a septic tank and field. Access to the proposed parcel is from Range Road 140 to the east and legal access to the residual parcel is from Range Road 140 or Township Road 204. Information from the AER indicates that there are three active gas wells on the residual parcel no north of the proposed parcel and there are no abandoned wells within the quarter section. There are wetlands on the residual parcel and there are no historic resources located within the proposed. The application has been circulated and we've received the following comments back from referral agencies. Municipal Services has no issues or concerns. TELUS has no objection. And Fortis Alberta does not require an easement. Based on this, it is recommended that the, that the subdivision be approved subject to the condition that all outstanding property taxes be paid to the County of Newell. Questions? Ryan. I'm just curious about the west side of that. It looks, um, I think there's a fence line there, but I'm not 100% sure. Was there some logic to adding that uh, beyond the, the yard site? I'm going to answer that one. So again, we did look at this last month and the month before, I can't remember, about six weeks ago, um, when it was forward for a rezone. Um, again, this particular applicant is looking for a larger parcel um, based on historic use of the yard site. Again, it's beyond uh, the improvements in the yard. So it was uh, put forward for rezoning it in this configuration and this um, following the fence lines as proposed. Um, there was no changes at the council level. So again, um, all of the you know, reasons behind, I, I don't have it, but it would be reasonable to expect that there's a historic fence and that's why it's angled the way it is. Okay, Brian. Yeah, and I do remember the application. I do remember that one actually. Because <laughs> um, Miss, Mrs. Berg was actually in here. So, anyway, so I'd move approval for that because I, I do recall the, the circumstances. Okay, Brian moves, but we have further questions. Anne Marie. I have a question about the dugout. Um, it says in the application that the dugout it doesn't meet the setback, but it doesn't tell us how close to the property line it is. I'm going to take that one again. Um, and that's an interesting one because the information wasn't provided. So visually, I'm looking at it to say it's not 100 feet. Um, it is a historic dugout. Um, I didn't ask for the information, if that's something that MPC does need. Um, as you can indicate, we haven't asked for a waiver of that dugout um, in the idea that it's allowed to stay. If they were to move it, um, we would want the 100 feet. But again, because it's historic, I didn't require the the movement of the parcel at the time and didn't ask for the waivers. So um, that one is, is perhaps on me, but I said from my visual and looking at these, I know it's not 100 feet back because 30 meters is a pretty good chunk back from that. Um, so again, there's a couple of different options that MPC can ask for. If you need the information or you feel that the dugout historically there does need to be the 100 feet back, we could ask for them to increase the parcel size um, and show that information or um, just allow it to, to stay as is. Um, again, it appeared to be on parcels that are, again, probably grazed versus um, cultivated. I know some of the reasons for having the 100 feet back would be to ensure that um, the adjacent parcel, if you're cultivating it, you don't get leakage and, and the sogginess. In this case, I guess if there's cows there, they'd be soggy. Um, but. Uh, so again, those are my reasons behind it, but again, um, the decision is up to MPC. So you could ask for additional information on this one, or you can approve it as is. So we, we agree that that's logical to have that parcel size, because that's traditional use, the dugout is traditional, but would it then not have been wise to probably have a variance for that? And at the rezoning stage, 
council doesn't determine um, variances or waivers to that. So then it is up to MPC to determine if you issue it a waiver, then it solidifies it in the idea that you're allowing it to be there. Um, if you ignore it, it's just there and it's non-compliant. And the other option is to say, well, you didn't agree with council and you want that set back because the bylaw says it's 30 meters and you can bump that line if you so choose to. So you've got a couple different options when you get to this, this stage. My recommendation was to leave it as is, looking at it as a historic dugout, um, not really wanting to make the parcel any bigger than it already is, but again, 100 feet around the dugout probably won't make a huge um, difference in acreage. Um, and also looking at the adjacent use of the land and not having it cultivated, um, my determination was to just allow it to stay non-compliant and uh, carry on. So that just help me then, the dugout is right in that, what I would think is the southwest corner? On the, is it, it's outside the, Okay, and what and what is that dark spot right in the middle there on the southwest corner then? Outside of the, outside of the. Yes. Oh, that's a wetland. Yeah. That's a wetland or a wet spot. So yeah, it's not uh, what they consider a dugout. So those are those wetlands <laughs> that have been identified on the mapping. Again, that's an interesting one. As everyone's familiar with this particular piece, this is an old rail bed. So my guess is, as you can see that, that cut or scar across it, you're going to have pooling of water on either side of that raised right bed. So my guess is they're not natural wetlands. They're going to be man-made wetlands. So again, looking at this, the only time that we've been dealing with wetlands or requiring wetland assessments is when we're looking at developing. So we're gonna disturb the ground. In this case, um, we're not dealing with it or asking them to do anything additional to it. But definitely the um, dugout is up in that kind of, which is why they're making that weird kink across. Okay, how's MPC want to deal with it, Trace? Well, I, I guess my question or my thought around it is, if we're at a, a situation right now where we can adjust the boundaries a wee bit to make the dugout compliant, why would we not want to do that if it's such a small variance instead of leaving it as non-compliant and then, you know, maybe or maybe not it'll come back in the future that it's non-compliant. So would we not just adjust it at this point and then it's clear and free? Diane. That's a question for MPC. Again, <laughs> you know, and an interesting thing about it, and, and again, it's this difficult one. I said when they're doing new development, I think it makes a ton of sense to try to, to cite these things in a way that are going to cause less issues. In these case, I don't know. I'm assuming this is a pretty historic um, yard site. It's probably been there a lot of years. The dugout has been there a lot of years. We have gone from a 25-foot setback to a 100-foot setback. We may go back to a, t a 10 foot setback because we were at 10 at one time, right, Lionel? So we went 10 to 20 to 100. We might move it back again. So again, I look at these ones too. This is something that the applicant has indicated that they want, that this is the size they want for whatever reason. And unless there's a real good determination when it's something historic, I kind of look at it and trying to balance everything out. So you could do that and make it compliant with today's setback. Um, but again, I look at it and say, is there any, is there, what's the benefit to that? And does it, um, you know, what goal, what planning goal are we meeting by requiring them to do that? So, yeah, if this was, again, adjacent to the road, we might even have a different discussion about them leaking, you know, if it's a historic dugout and we've got soft spots in our road, we may say, hey, we want to move this. It's an opportunity to do that. Based on where it is, based on kind of understanding that this is a, and again, we don't look at ownership exactly, but this is a fairly, um, you know, they own a lot of the land around this, you know. Um, not sure that um, that's going to make a big difference in the long run. So again, it's lots of things that I take into consideration 
that I probably don't write down, or you probably get six pages of planner's comments um, with my musings about uh, what I think should happen. But those are the things that have been running through my mind when I've, I've kind of done it, and I've, I've kind of weighed out what the applicant has wanted and, and what are the consequences. So, But that doesn't mean um, you as MPC can't determine that, no, we've got a policy, let's meet, let's follow the policy let's um, ensure that we've got the, the required setback. So again, either way, you can do anything you'd like to do um, within reason as long as it meets policy. Okay, how do you wish to? You have a motion? Roy. Brian? Oh, right, okay. Brian was quick on the draw and then we started discussing it, right? Okay, we have a motion to approve as is, as presented. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, it is passed. Go on to the next one, Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next, the last subdivision we have today is file number 2019-0-062. The purpose of this application is a boundary adjustment to correct an encroachment by subdividing a 0.4 acre portion of the northwest quarter section of 32-17-14 west of the 4th meridian and consolidating the land to the adjacent parcel legally known as Lot 1, Block 1, Plan 1710622. The parcels are located in Division 2 south of the City of Brooks. The parcel to be subdivided is approximately 37 feet wide and 467 feet long. A portion of an existing barn is located on the parcel and the new west property line is approximately 26 feet from the structure which exceeds the minimum setbacks of the Agricultural Land Use District. Access to the new and residual parcel is from a developed county road to the north. Information from AER indicates there are no abandoned wells located within the vicinity of the lands to be subdivided. There are no wetlands within the vicinity of lands and no historic resources. A deferred reserve caveat was registered in 2017 when Lot 1, Block 1, Plan 1710622 was created in the amount of 2.52 acres. The application has been circulated and we received the following comments back from referral agencies. TELUS has no objection. Fortis Alberta does not require an easement and Alberta Transportation does not require a permit. Based on this, it is recommended that the subdivision be approved subject to the following conditions. A 10% reserve requirement be taken pursuant to section 661 and 666 of the MGA, which will be deferred by caveat on the parcel to be created with the actual acreage to be dedicated being determined at the final stage for municipal reserve purposes and further that the existing deferred reserve caveat be discharged in its entirety and a new caveat for the value of 2.56 acres be registered on the new parcel for municipal reserve purposes pursuant to section 669 number two and three of the MGA. And two conditions that go along with that are that all outstanding property taxes be paid to the County of Newell and that the subdivided portion of the Northwest quarter section of 321714 west of the 4th meridian be consolidated with the adjacent parcel legally known as lot 1 block 1 plan 1710622 in a manner such that the resulting certificate of title could not be subdivided without the approval of the subdivision authority okay thank you questions comments Emery. I'll make the motion to approve. And Marie makes the motion to approve. Any further comments? All in favor? That is passed. Finally get a, get a quick one. It's a lesson that uh, we don't have to worry too much. If we have to make a few adjustments later, we can just do that. Okay. No post agenda items, nothing on camera. Question period. Seeing none, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron.